All right, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you guys are back into the live classroom. I know the majority of you guys did finish off reading that article that I gave you about description and why it's important to know when and how to use it. Now, it was funny. I was, I went through and did the same strategy, you guys, as, as you guys. So my, I just wanted to show you what I did, ended up doing on the article as well. And I'm going to give you guys a chance then to get into pairs and kind of discuss the article and what you thought about it. But you can see, if I move this way, right here, this, this right on the very first page, you guys, it doesn't mean you have to go into detail about everything for every scene. I really connected to that. That's why I put a check mark there. I connected to that sentence solely because I don't know how many of you guys have read, has any of you guys read uh, Tolkien? Like Lord of the Rings? Give me a green check mark if you have. No? All right, then you won't really understand. <laughs> But, oh, Chloe, I knew you would have, Chloe. Yeah. Okay, so, Abby, I'm like you, some of it, okay? So, when I read Tolkien, and you guys might actually get really mad at me for seeing Alex. I love the movies. Love Lord of the Rings movies. Love, love, love them. I can't stand Tolkien's writing. I'm sorry, you guys. I know some of you may n disagree with me and have to uh, have a verbal disagreement with me. Chloe, I do not need to read six pages describing the grass. Get on with it, <laughs> right? So that's that sentence really um, uh, was important to me and it really connected with me because it instantly brought me back to thinking about how I feel about Tolkien, right? And then as you scroll down with the article, you guys, um, I found this, uh, this uh, paragraph really important as well. Yes, Taylor, exactly. And I read Game of Thrones as well. I love Game of Thrones. I'm actually reading book five right now. So um, this, this paragraph really resonated with me, you guys. Description isn't about using pretty words and complicated sentences, right? It's conveying that emotion. So it's really important to understand the reason of why and how you use it. Okay? Sounds good, Damon. Okay, so that one was really important to me. That's I starred that. And there was something else that I starred as well later on in the article because I felt it was a really this. Remember, to engage your reader, it's your choice of language. It's the choice of sentence and word structure. It's your relevance to the scene and the ability to keep it real. Okay, it doesn't need to be flowery and all pretty, right? It's can you evoke emotion in your reader? That's really, really important. That's what I want you guys to keep in the back of your brain when you start writing your guys' paragraphs and eventually as we get into longer, okay? Exactly, Taylor. So what I want to do, you guys, is in Blackboard, could you quickly uh, raise your hands? Hit the raise your hand button. If everybody could just raise their hands. Awesome. Perfect. Because what this is going to do, you guys, it's going to mix you guys up on your participant list. And if everybody could just do that, that would be awesome because now it mixes up your guys' partners. And I'm not always like, okay, Abby and Ava, you guys go together, right? Because all the A's are all at the top. So if we can do this, now just go who, wherever your name is, right? So if we look at the list, you guys, I'm just going to put it up here. So if Chloe and Devin could go together, Taylee and Sophia, Avery Bria, Haley Savannah, Jack Anna, Abby Taylor, Shayna Ava, Jade Brendan, and then Alex and Naomi. If you guys can partner up and in a private chat, I'm going to give you guys three minutes, okay, to just discuss what you guys marked up your page with. What did you think were the important points? And actually, um, this is actually the main, I'm just going to bring up my PowerPoint here, you guys, because this is what I really want you to think about. What is the big idea from this article? What did, was the big idea that you got out of this article? So I'm going to give you guys three minutes to private chat with your partner. And then when we come back 
into the room chat is when we'll share with the whole class. All right, so you have three minutes to private chat with your partner about what is the big idea from this article. Go. Perfect. So I can see you guys just finishing up your thoughts a bit. That's totally fine. Please finish up. I don't want to um, rush you guys. All right. So now what I'd like you to do, once you've finished up with your partner, okay, and discussing what, what you guys thought the big idea from the article was, in the room chat now, in your own words, what I would like you to do is now tell me, what did you think the big idea from this article was? So now I want to share out to the rest of the class, all right? So take a couple minutes and now in the room chat, in your own words, what was the big idea from the article? And you can lower your hands as well, you guys, if you want, on Blackboard.
Absolutely, Abby and Taylor. It is all about making that boring story really interesting. You can take that blade of grass and hopefully if you use description, you can capture your reader's imagination, right? Yes, Alex, I love that point. That was huge. It's not just about describing something. It's evoking emotion within your reader, capturing, making them want to cry, making them want to laugh, whatever emotion it is that you want to convey. I think that's really, really key. Yeah. You guys are nailing it. Great job. Perfect, David. All right. Yeah, I think you guys really nailed that article. I think you really got the gist of what those main points were. It's not just about telling a story. It's about evoking motion, but it's also when to use that description, right? To get your point across and keep telling the story. I think Savannah kind of made that point as well, right? So that's really, really important. All right. So now using that article... Okay, using your rough draft or your brainstorm that we did last class, okay, let's talk about what makes a great descriptive paragraph then, okay? Now that we've got ideas around imagery and description and we've really been delving into that knowledge, now let's talk about what makes an excellent descriptive paragraph. So when you guys hand in your paragraphs, I'm going to go, wow, this is amazing. Okay. So this is what I'd like to do as a group. We're going to co-construct some criteria around what a great or excellent descriptive paragraph actually is. So in the room chat, I just want you guys to start typing in some ideas around what makes a great descriptive paragraph. What should we all be looking for and including in our paragraphs so that I can easily assess your guys' paragraph? So in the room chat, just to start typing out ideas, please. And I'm gonna jot them down on my PowerPoint here so that I have a record for you guys. And I can then put it, go back and put it into the assignment. Awesome. So we've got detail, feeling, description. Make sure I'm spelling everything right. Compare, I love that, comparisons. So I'm going to put similes. And then we also quickly discussed metaphors, right? Uh, creativity. Detail about the different senses. And if I end up typing something, you guys, that doesn't, you know, doesn't relate to what you actually typed in, please tell me. Evoke emotion. I'm just going to make this. There we go. So paint it. Good. Oh, good one. Good one, Bria. Sensory simulation. Word choice. I like that. Anything else, you guys? And again, we're going to come back to this. On a regular basis, is there anything we love? Is there anything we hate? We don't even know what that means. We've thought about it a bit more. We don't like it. So this is our initial list. 
Okay. And again, I think next class, we're probably going to come back to this, you guys, to really delve into it. Okay. And really make sure that this is, maybe there's some overlap. Maybe we see some major themes coming out of this, right? Maybe some of them actually mean the same thing. Okay. And they can be grouped together. All right. This is a great first list. And that is where I do want to stop. So now thinking about that, thinking about this list, and I will put this list when I get back to my office, you guys, I will put this list, um, back up in, um, my, when I get back to the office, I will put this back up into the assignment. So you guys actually have this for your records. All right. So now what I want to do is using that criteria that we just created and your brainstorm. Okay. Now I have actually provided you a template to develop your rough draft of your paragraph. And I really want to go through the template really quickly. Okay. Because you may be like, what is this Miss Ward? I want to quickly explain it. Okay. So you will notice when you download the Word doc that I've given you, you'll notice the little hamburger. This is a great way to dissect your writing when you're writing a in a descriptive manner. Look at it as a hamburger from your favorite burger joint, okay? So the bun, the top and the bottom are your uh, placeholders, right? It holds everything together. So your top bun is like your topic sentence and the bottom part of the bun is your concluding sentence. Everything in between is the, the meat. It's the detail. It's the description. <laughs> Chloe. <laughs> Chloe just said she's vegetarian. <laughs> so you'll have like a tofu burger or maybe you'll have your, uh, your mushroom in there, right? Instead of the meat. But every, basically every layer of your burger, Oh, Savannah. Yeah, I do this even through all my grades because it's a great visual for you guys to see how to do this, right? So basically like the lettuce, the meat, the cheese, the pickles, the condiments, all of that is another sentence to add to your, um, your paragraph. All right. Now, Ava, great question. How many sentences, right? Should our paragraph be? That's a great question. And I think in, I don't know if I actually put it on. No, I didn't. So what I would like you guys to do is just give me two seconds and I'll bring up the assignment. So in here, ladies and gentlemen, here is the download button for <laughs> for this. And let me just open it up and let's see how many details I put in there. You guys know me as well. I'm not a, a huge stickler for length. I'm really big on, does it evoke emotion? Are we getting that criteria down? Did you meet the criteria? Your, your paragraph might only be five sentences long, but if there, you know, is a huge uh, emotion, then fantastic. You've you've met the criteria, right? And some of you may need to go longer. It's totally up to you. Okay. So in the download, you guys, I think I've put about six. Yeah. So on this template, you've got about eight sentences. Eight, I would say eight to 10 sentences is a really strong paragraph. Okay. <coughs> Still beating my cough, you guys. So that's what in the template, I've got about eight to 10. Just use that as a guideline. Don't go back and be like counting your sentences when you write. Okay. If you've got only seven, but you think it's fantastic and you've met all the criteria, then great. Okay. I'm not going to be assessing you on your length. This is a guideline. Okay. So Abby, it's totally up to you. I would like, um, you can do it straight on the document. It is just a word document, or if you want to print it and handwrite it, it's totally up to you guys. You can do more than, than the, the, the detail that I've given in the template for sure. Ava. Okay. No, do not put this on to Weebly, Taylor, because this is only your rough draft. We're going to be even doing more work with this. Okay. So, um, Anna, great question. I would like your rough drafts done. Yes. I would like your rough drafts done. Okay. Um, 
by next class. So you guys don't have class tomorrow. So, um, and I haven't looked at next week's schedule. So I'm thinking Monday, if you have it done for Monday, that would be great. Okay. Because then next class we can do some uh, peer review, do some editing and get our good copies done. All right. So when you, and when you do this, you guys, okay, I'm just going to go back to my PowerPoint and make sure I'm telling you guys all the steps here. Cause I don't want to miss anything. Okay. So once you're done your rough draft, okay. And again, what I'd like you to do is then complete, um, a self-assessment. This is going to be part of your self-assessment. So using the criteria that we just co-constructed, okay, what I'd like you to do is actually go back into your work, take a look at it, read through it, highlight specific examples from your work. So you can either underline them or actually take a highlighter. Okay. And highlight the specific details, the similes, the metaphors, whatever that, whatever your examples are. I want to see concrete examples in your work that you're self-assessing. So Taylor, remember when we started our brainstorm, our paragraph's going to be about a specific moment in our lives, either from your EKG right? So it's tying in that life story. So choose one of the most significant points in your life and you're just doing the rough draft. Okay. I would like you to hand this in as well though. So once you've highlighted, right, and you can do that on a word doc, right? You guys easy enough when you're in word to highlight something, just let me open up here, I'll open up the article again. If you want to highlight something and you're on the home page, if you just see this little icon right here beside the, you can actually highlight. Okay. And then you can just click and drag across any text and that will be able to, um, bring up your highlighter. So if there are, I will stay um, in, uh, Blackboard, ladies and gentlemen, for the next couple of minutes, but you are heading to math as well. All right. Right away here. Mr. Borden will probably need 10 minutes just to set up his, his gear and then we'll head to math. So let's aim for, uh, 1040 to be in math. He said I was allowed to run over today, you guys. So I know you're supposed to already be started with math right now, but let's give him a few minutes. So 1040, be ready to go uh, into the live classroom for math and Mr. Borden's uh, Blackboard. And I'll stay in my Blackboard for the next couple of minutes, you guys, to, to answer any questions. And yes, Jade, great, absolutely. You can make up your defining moment as well. If it's not on your EKG, that's fine. As long as it's a significant moment in your life, okay? So we will see you guys on, uh, tomorrow. Actually, I'm going to be a bowling. Be ready. Yes. And hand in your rough drafts. All right. Bye you guys.